Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do the very highly requested video of how I afford to travel as a student. If you're not following me already on Instagram, then you won't know that I do travel a lot. Ever since my gap year, I kind of got the travel bug. So I just wanted to give you guys my tips and advice and tell you how I managed to afford to travel a lot as a student at university because yeah, travel is expensive, but you guys can do it too. So since starting university in October 2016, I've taken 10 trips abroad to 11 different countries and 22 cities and I just wanted to tell you how I did that. I just wanted to say first of all, lots of people just assume that I'm rich or that I have my mum my funding it, I'm, she, I've come from a single parent household, but that is honestly not true. When I'm travelling with my friends or alone, it is completely funded 100% by myself. My mum, I get no money from my mum whatsoever, the only time I get money from her or she has anything to do with the cost is when it's a family holiday and that was, for example, when I went to Greece and when I went to Florence earlier this year and they're the only times that she has any involvement with it. All the rest of my trips have been fully funded by myself. Now, the ways in which you can travel as a student in the ways in which I do. The number one thing is very obvious, but it's just save your money for traveling. How badly do you want it? How much do you, you want to put time and effort into saving money specifically towards travel? For me, I personally, I save all my money and it's mainly for traveling. Other people have different goals and different aspirations and things like that, but I just mainly save my money specifically for traveling. So when I get a job or when I get paid from whatever I'm doing, I usually stash half of that away for savings and then I usually the, the other half I have to spend on whatever I want and most of the time it will pro probably be about 10 to 20 percent will be having fun going out with friends eating out or doing those kinds of activities but the other 30 to 40 percent will be solely on traveling and that is just what I do that's my personal choice and it's just so so easy to do if you start cutting back on certain little things I've done a blog post on how to save money to travel but Honestly, it's very, very easy when you start looking at your expenses. If you, The first thing I'll say is if you don't already do this, you need to log your expenses. You need to see where you're spending your money. Are you buying a coffee here, then, all the time? Because that will add up. One coffee from Starbucks is, what, £2.95? That's so expensive. That can save you a lot of money if you just start cutting small things out of your life. I don't know how long you've been watching my channel, but I haven't bought clothes for myself <clears throat> in a very, very, very long time. I just... It's not a priority for me. For some people, yes, they want to they treat themselves, they want to buy new clothes, <clears throat> they want to have the latest fashion trend. For me, I personally, I just don't care. When I buy clothes, I invest in slightly more expensive pieces that I know will last longer and are very simple and basic and you can always wear them anytime. So yeah, I don't really go shopping to buy clothes. I don't really buy other things. And if I do buy clothes, I mean, the last time I went shopping for myself was probably last summer or something but yeah the, when I do where if I do buy clothes it will be out of the 10 to 20 percent budget from my earnings the number one thing is just to budget and save up your money in certain ways if you want me to do a specific video on how to budget specifically then let me know in the comment section below because I have a lot of money saving tips for you but if I, if I said them all right now we would be here a very long time you have two options when you're deciding to travel as a student. It's either you've saved up the money yourself and you're going to fund the trip yourself and plan it and everything which I'll talk a bit about in a minute or the second option is you can do programs which are fully funded or partially funded and these allow you to travel as well as do other things. If you want to do programs abroad, these I would highly, highly recommend because most of the time as a university student, there are so, so many opportunities out there for you to do programs which are either funded or partially funded or you can get scholarships for and they are the easiest way to travel because everything pretty much, maybe apart from flights, are completely funded for you. For example, you could go and au pair in a different country where generally most of the costs are covered already. You do nothing you just in return you obviously have to look after a child and a family you could be volunteering you could be teaching you could be doing a, a cultural immersion program so for example last summer I did the three week study China program with the British Council and that was completely funded the only thing I had to pay for was flights and I personally was intending on going to China that summer anyway it was really 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 good to go on that kind of trip because I got to do activities I got to learn Mandarin I got to experience ch more Chinese culture and I got to go and have an amazing three weeks completely paid for and all I had to pay for was flights so there are lots of different schemes and programs programs out there for university students where you can just go abroad and you don't really have to pay much money at all you only have to raise money for flights and that obviously significantly reduces your costs when you're saving to travel and also when you're there if you do some kind of program like that you can usually generally because you might be paying for flights or whatever you can stay on longer than what the program is so last year obviously my program was three weeks I've done a whole vlog series of it and I was actually in China for five and a half weeks instead of the three 
So I stayed out there longer and traveled a bit more around China. So yeah, that's an easy way to get to the country. First of all, do whatever activities and programs you're doing, which are not only good because you get to travel and see more of a country that you've never been to before potentially, but it also means that you can then travel around from that country after you've done that program. So I'll definitely recommend looking into programs that are available to university students because I know there are so, so, so many out there. I wish I had enough summers to fulfill them and do a lot more than I am. But yeah, there are so many different programs um, out there. So just have a look and they are very easy ways to travel more as a student. Back onto funding the trips for yourself. Again, something that I think people think if you're a university student that you are always on a budget, you're very tight for money. And yes, that is really, that is, that is 100% true. But it depends, as I said before, how important traveling is to you and how much you actually want to do it and dedicate saving money towards it. Does that even make sense? Anyway, yeah. So I would say that when you are saving up your money to travel, the best thing that you need to do is look up cheap flights. I think I'm very, 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 very skilled in finding cheap flights. I will spend so long, so, so, so long searching for cheap flights. It's probably a, a ridiculous amount, but it saves me a lot of money. One favorite website of mine is Skyscanner, but I don't just use Skyscanner because, for, so for example, when I was looking for my flights for China this year, I looked at Skyscanner, but when I looked around even more on other websites, I ended up finding a better deal. So I would use Skyscanner, Google Flights, the airline sites themselves, sometimes Kayak. There's so many different websites that I use. If you want a more like in-depth video on how I specifically like look and search for flights, then honestly comment that below because yeah I can tell you how I do how I do it but yeah you need to just look at cheap flights and you need to be flexible so flexibility means being able to fly on a Monday Tuesday or Wednesday which are typically cheaper than Thursday Friday Saturday when you search you should do the flexible like plus or minus three days that's very useful you just need to make sure that you are not stuck on like oh I have to fly on this certain day because that might be significantly more expensive another tip I have is if you want to fly somewhere it might even be cheaper to fly to a nearby destination, which might be say 40 pounds cheaper, and then a train from that destination to where you actually want to go is say 10 pounds. Then you've saved yourself 20 pounds. And I know it's like long, but it's all about saving the money so you can max out the amount of traveling you're doing. And it probably, if it's a nearby destination, then the, the train journey probably won't be too long either. So for example, when I was planning a trip this summer with some of my friends, which we're not actually doing now, but when we were planning it, we wanted to go to Songk Ter and it's too expensive to fly directly there. So we were going to fly to Basel or to Genoa, Genoa, however you say it, and then get a train down. So being flexible, being creative and thinking about, oh, different ways in which you can try and travel somewhere for the cheapest amount of money possible is definitely, kind of fun in the process of when you're planning it. I mean, I find it quite fun because you're like, oh, how can I get the best deal? Definitely consider flying to a different destination, which might be cheaper. So always have a play around when you're looking for flights because that can really save you money. Number two, I would say is accommodation, saving money on accommodation. You obviously don't, if you're a student traveler, I'm sorry, who has the money to stay in a hotel? Like, no. If you want to use your money wisely, maybe you want to splash out, fair enough. If you want to use your money wisely, max out your dollar for the best use possible when you're traveling, you want to be staying in hostels or Airbnbs. The only time you should really stay in an Airbnb is if you have a specific reason for wanting to like have your own personal space, if it's more of a like relaxation holiday and you're treating yourself, or if it is the same price, if not cheaper than a hostel. If you have never used Airbnb and you're new to it, I can give you 25% off. I'll link it all down below with my discount code. But yeah, otherwise use hostels. Hostels, I love hostels. Hostels mean that you have kitchen facilities and that's that brings me on to number three. Tip number three is to, when you are on holiday, you just need to make sure you're aware of how you're budgeting while you're actually there. So what I did in my gap year and what I still do now on slightly longer trips is I cook for myself when I'm at a hostel and I mix that in with eating out as well because cooking for yourself can save you so, so, so much money, especially if you're in quite an expensive place. So for example, I've just come back now from Copenhagen. Unfortunately, the hostel didn't actually have kitchen facilities, but we made sure we made packed lunches every day for lunch and that just saved us so much money. I think I spent about three pounds on lunch and that lunch lasted me for two or three days and that's three pounds on lunch. And if we'd eaten out at a, at a restaurant, that would have cost me minimum 15 pounds. So come on, I saved, how much is that? That's 45 pounds and then I spent three pounds. So I save myself 42 pounds. Just think about taking packed lunches, cooking for yourself in the evenings, pasta and pasta sauce, that's so cheap wherever you go. So yeah, make sure you're not always eating out, you're doing a mix and match, you're trying to maximize the best use of your money. Another tip that I would say is when you're going to certain cities, if you if it's a city break or if they have some kind of like city destination card, so like the Copenhagen card, the Stockholm pass, the 
I think they're Leather London card. Cards like that, sometimes they can really save you a lot of money if you are wanting to go to a lot of the destinations that the card covers. Most of the time the cards also cover transport, which can also save a lot of money. I would definitely recommend looking into that when you're going to the destinations. Another tip I would have is when you get to a destination, a really, really good way to kind of get a feel for the destination and get more ideas about what you want to actually do when you get there is to go on a free walking tour. Most cities have free walking tours available with different companies. If you just do a quick Google search of the city free walking tour. Generally, if I do that, I would do that on the first day when I get there. It's about an hour, two hours of your time. Go around, learn more about the city. You have a starting point. Other things to think about are, depends on the time that you go, but sometimes lots of cities have free events on. I know in the summer, a lot of European cities have lots of free events on in the summer because it's outside it's outdoors lots of different things going on so always have a search before you go especially if you're planning a trip you can always have a search before and say oh free events June or free events December and you can see what's the best time to go where it has lots of different free things that you'll be interested in another thing I'd recommend is make the use of your student card you're not a university student forever make sure you are taking your university card wherever you go traveling because this can save you so 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 much money for example in Florence a lot of the museums and even when I went to Greece when I went to Athens recently a lot of the attractions and sites are completely free for university students from the EU 18 to 25 I think it is as long as you have a student ID card that will save you so 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 much money it saved me I think 25 euros or something just got the Acropolis so yeah it will save you a lot of money remember to take it there's also the ISIC student NUS card ISIC card which is the only internationally recognized student card I would definitely recommend investing or looking into buying that because that also gets you lots of student discount and is very good for saving you money but always everywhere you go when you're traveling always ask do you have a student discount because you never know when it could save you a lot of money I remember in Australia a lot of uh, cafes and restaurants did backpacker meal deals as long as you had a student card to show oh you are a student and that saved us a lot of money as well so definitely remember to take your student card with you because yeah it will save you money. Okay, another way to be able to afford to travel is if you are a student, you probably have a lot of free time in your holidays or even during term time. I know at Oxford and Cambridge, you're not technically allowed to have a job, but I know at other universities, you have the opportunity to have a job and to earn a lot of money on the side. Lots of my friends at other universities, they all have jobs. And that means that you can save that money, put it aside, put away, you know, maybe 10, 20%, 30%, whatever amount you want towards traveling and have like a travel fund pot, which you use specifically for travel. A little bit goes a long way when you get paid. If you just say, I'm gonna dedicate putting 25% away or 30% of what I've just earned into a travel foot pot, pot pot fund it might not seem like a lot of money I might say say it might be like 50 50 pounds or even less than that 30 pounds but it will eventually add up and flights like Ryanair my flights to Copenhagen return with 35 pounds alone if you if you put away bits of money here and there across the time that you're working on your um, and you're working with your job you will be able to fund a short trip away to Europe before you know it so I would definitely say get a job because you probably have time if you don't have time during the term then definitely get one in the holidays especially the summer holidays because it's a very very long holiday I know the UK UK students have very long summer holidays so definitely fill it with a summer job there's lots of things you can do I think the main thing if you're going to take away anything from this is one you can travel by going on programs which are funded you just need to do your research if you want me to do a video on that then let me know in the comment section below but number two is it's all about saving money to travel and budgeting really well and doing your research beforehand it's all about putting your money by money away dedicating yourself and committing to saving money to travel and then planning and making sure you're finding the best possible deals to travel and use your money and use your money in the best way possible. I can't tell you what to do, I can only tell you what works for me. I can't make you do it, if you want to do it, you will do it and I can promise you now, even if you just put a small amount away every single month, it will add up and you will be able to travel more and more and more. And I think once you get the travel bug, you will just have it and you'll just be motivated to to just not spend money on that, that meal out, to not spend a lot of money on alcohol. You know, if you're a university student, I save a lot of money by when I go out, I don't take my card because that is dangerous. I only take say 10 pounds or 15 pounds cash and that is all I have for the night out most of the time I don't even take that much money most of the time I only take 10 pounds and I'll only spend money on the entrance and I won't spend money buying drinks I personally just wouldn't do that maybe if you do like to drink a lot really use pre's to drink and don't pay for the expensive drinks in the clubs but that again drinking and alcohol and all of that student kind of culture it will save you so much money if you just know how to spend your money and how to save it and how to use it well. Small little cutbacks at university will save you so, so, so much money. I know the lighting is so, so, so different now. I'm really sorry, guys. What I was doing was my ending. I hope you have found this video useful. Please give it a like if you did and click that subscribe button if you want to see more travel videos because I am very, very happy to sit down and do a lot more informative videos. So anything else that I haven't covered or anything else you want to know, please just let me know in the comments below. And yeah, follow my Instagram if you want to keep up to date with the rest of my travels this summer. Bye, guys.